Good morning, everybody. So today I wanted to talk to you about the narcissist and the construct. The construct of how they can get to a point to where they're permanently possessed. They get to a point to where they built this construct based on evil before they were possessed or during the state of oppression. And they get to a state to where they start to get over on people, even as a child. First, maybe they got hurt through somebody not loving them, or maybe they got slighted one too many times for what they could handle. But in that process, they started to go down this state of mind where if they asked for something and they couldn't get it, then they manipulated somebody into giving it to them or they stole it. And they got to a point to where they did enough of this and they built this construct. They built this construction site and they framed it up and they put a roof on it, windows and doors in it. They put a heating and ventilation system in it and it was all built on evil. It was built on everything evil because when you go down a construct where you start to manipulate individuals for things, manipulate individuals, triangulating them, projecting onto them, you're starting to learn these behaviors. And this happens slowly over time. And they start to realize that it, it works for them. Then they start to get oppressed through it and they don't have faith to believe in God or they decide to hate God or they decide that there is no God. And they go down this construct and they continue to work through jealousy and envy and deceit, lack, hoard, they start hoarding and, and doing all of these things that are starting to destroy even the children around them's lives. They become a bully. They may start drinking or using drugs early, throwing themselves into different things like music or witchcraft. They could be the accumulation of things by theft. They could throw themselves into education. A lot of times these golden children, they go down the construct of not wanting to be abused, so they become like their abuser and they start to go down and walk down that construct to where that construct is demonic construct because they're following this hierarchy narcissist who is already dealing with demon possession and so they just follow that out because they want to please the head narcissist or they could hate the head narcissist but they know that it works it works better to be the abuser than to be the abused and so over time they end up giving up on love. So I'm not finished here. This is going to jump off from the last podcast that I spoke on because there's something that I want to speak on here that I want to make a point that this type of possession is different than other types of possession. And that's my point. When you start to build a construct uh, through the oppression, especially at a younger age, and then you're almost you're, if you're manipulating, manipulation is witchcraft. And if you're starting to manipulate already at a young age and follow the construct of somebody who is demonically possessed and then you begin to like it and you begin to rather out of fear and pride and hate, put down love, you can get to a point to where you can not use these centers. And then you start to walk in this, this trauma state, right? And then when you eventually do get possessed, because witchcraft opens doors and a lot of these individuals get into anything to give them power and control spelling tarot anything seances all of these things i've even read books on this stuff where they would talk about people that did get delivered but they didn't build a construct where they absolutely gave up on love 
but there's something to say about that because when you give up on love, there's so many things tethered to love. And I, I don't think I realized it until more recently, but every fruit of the spirit or anything good in your character is related to love. So when you talk on the narcissist, the narcissist is, you can't find people that could say just about not anything good about the narcissist, really, in their character outside of, they may be, they may look good, their outer shell may look good, you know, but that has nothing to do with their, their character, really. They may have some sort of persuasiveness or uh, charm, but it's built on, like I said, evil. It's all built on it to seduce and subtly seduce, which is worse. And they get to a point where then when they do get possessed, this is why you cannot extract or deliver certain types. And I think the narcissist, a lot of people want to say, love the narcissist and, or, or pray for the narcissist and hate the, the sin. But, uh, you know, at some point, you have to, if you're a Bible believer, you have to come to the conclusion that you are probably, I, I haven't found anybody or anything else that hits Romans 1, 20 through 31, where it talks about the reprobate at all, even to where you could do these PETs and MRIs in certain centers on the right brain are just off. They're just not operating anymore. These are centers of creativity, of having fun and art and free freedom. These are the love centers. God is known for, you know, he is love. He's known for a lot of things. God is truth. God is love. God is all of these things. But I've also, remember there's a scripture. I don't know if it's, I think it's in like Isaiah or I think it's in Isaiah, but it says that there'll be a time coming where good will be called evil and evil will be called good. What I learned over time in my walk with the Lord, not to change it up or anything, but what I think is very synonymous with that scripture is, is God is perfect common sense. Perfect common sense, not just common sense. He's perfect common sense and it's perfection. It's, it, it's, it's the most sensible. And the enemy, Satan is, he's perfect senselessness. So it's almost as if you could say, there's a time coming where common sense will be called evil and perfect senselessness will be called good. I mean, not to change scripture, but I think it's very much the same. It's interesting because these individuals also lack common sense, but they may have logic, but they don't, they don't really have common sense. And all of the things that are under the construct of what is representative of God, they are missing. If the construct was built before they were possessed and they gave up on love before they were possessed, in my opinion, when you when you lose love, your innate self is corrupt and there's nothing you can almost do about it. That's what I'm starting to see in this situation. What happens is you can have an individual that gets possessed, but they still have an innate self intact. They still have the ability to love. They didn't give up on it. It might be suppressed while they are possessed, but they still have will. And I think that what happens is, is when they gave up on love and then they get possessed on top of it, their will is gone. So it's not that they sold their soul. It's not that they, um, that they kicked it out per se, but it is completely in tune with the demons that are possessing them. And so the problem would be is they would never have will to get deliverance. I mean, that's kind of where I'm going with this. And it may not pertain to everyone because there is, they say a, there's a spectrum. But I will say a lot of them are to the point to where there's no coming back. And to, to tell me that God can do anything. Yes, absolutely. But God also gave us that scripture for a reason. That there are reprobates here. And if they're not what the narcissist is, then I would like you to tell me who they may be then. Because when you cannot find a case that 
is a real case of being completely healed from this. Not one. With all the technology that we have. So we were able to go all over the earth here online. And there's not one case that I, that I, to me is believable. Because a self-aware narcissist is not somebody that's been healed and delivered and set free. Not at all. In fact, they're made worse, in my opinion, because they're more subtle than all. And that's exactly what the enemy was called in the Garden of Eden. What I'm getting at is if, even if you could extract the demons out of them, they would still be a narcissist. They just wouldn't be possessed anymore, and then they would get repossessed because they would never have the ability to get to God. And then they would become seven times worse. And when you see people that they can be possessed with some of the demons that the narcissist is possessed with, somebody could be possessed with a Jezebel and not be a narcissist. They will be acting as a narcissist during the time of possession. But those would be individuals that would have the opportunity to get that extracted or a Leviathan because they weren't a narcissist beforehand. What made them a narcissist was the possession. Because anytime a demon is possessing somebody, you're going to be a narcissist. It's the same thing with drugs and alcohol. You may not be a narcissist, but if you get addicted to a point to where you will do anything for drugs and alcohol, you are going to be a narcissist because you are going to be running off of the addiction of the drugs and the alcohol. But a person like that, that gets delivered and repents from the drugs and the alcohol, then they will have the ability to walk in the ways of the Lord and be back to whole. Also, you got to understand the narcissist is an addict as well. On the flip side of that, if you take a narcissist, right, that's built the construct already, and then they become an alcoholic or a drug addict, okay, and then you were to stop the alcohol and the drugs in the individual, they're still going to be a narcissist. In fact, they're probably going to be worse, and that's what they'll tell you in psychology. And it's really devastating to the family unit because if somebody believes it's coming from the drugs and the alcohol, and then when they come back from rehab and they're worse because now they're a, a dry drunk or dry addict narcissist, they're almost made worse. I think what happened with the narcissist is they gave up on love and they built this construct before or during the oppression then possession. And that's why they are permanent possession because even if they had the opportunity at the lowest level of a narcissist injury or whatever you want to call it, they would never truly wholeheartedly give their lives over to Christ. And so even if you had the ability, they would still rather be on the side of darkness than the side of godliness because they have gotten to a place to where they like it. And so that's where I get to a place to where there is no demon that somebody cannot extract that is walking with the Lord. But at the same time, that person that is infilled with the demon has got to have will to want to change. To know that they have an issue, they have a problem, and then that they want to change, that they got to forgive, and they have to set down pride. And for me, I haven't seen it yet. I have heard stories, and I have heard stories from... Uh, that man I spoke about that had said he had delivered and saved some narcissists. But still, I haven't seen them, these individuals on record stating that. And there's no information really that I have seen on it. And I also have to say that those individuals, it's very good possibility that he may have thought they were narcissists because they have the similar demons, but that they were not in the initial state of narcissism where they had given up on love completely before they were possessed. See, it's hard when you're trying to change somebody that's possessed, but even before they were possessed, they were acting in a possessed state. And that's where you get reprobate. In my opinion, it starts to where they gave up a whole lot more on the love factor side of things, and they liked it where they were okay with it. They liked it more than they liked love. And when you look at Christ, when he walked the earth and 
these narcissists were all over the place. You know, the Pharisees were narcissists. Judas was a narcissist. Did he try to deliver them? No. But they were definitely in filled with demons. They had to be. Because you can tell by their character and the things that they did. And he even called the Pharisees that were poking at him and building a smear campaign on him that they were of their father. They were like a brood of vipers, like their father, the devil. I mean, if he wasn't stating that they were possessed by what he said, they were religious narcissists, covert narcissists that were heavy, heavy into this game of evil, probably long before they even got possessed. And when you damage yourself or you allow yourself to go too far the wrong way, and then you have desires to do the evil rather than good. And then you go through a state of oppression, possession, and addiction, abuse, and trauma to others by any means necessary. And you become sadistic, pathological. Satan is the father of lies. He is built on complete betrayal. You, you really have to you know, kind of ask yourself, do you think that Christ, you know, wasted his time trying to save the, the Pharisees or Judas? It sure didn't seem like it. It seems to me that he spoke little and listened much and he gray rocked them. He gave them very little information just like they tell us to do in psychology to get rid of the narcissist. And just like they say in the in the biblical narrative of how to deal with evildoers. It's all encoded in the word, y'all. And when you wake up to narcissism, you go back and reread the word. You will find that that is the case. When Pharaoh in Egypt was an overt narcissist. Nobody, nobody cared to help him through uh God have any any grace on him? I mean, really. It was almost as if they knew what they were dealing with. And, you know, we don't want to have... You can do what you want, but at some point in time, and I've been there. I have been there and I have tussled with this thing. But at some point, this is some of the problem that empaths and individuals in this community deal with is sometimes you ain't hard enough you know to <clears throat> put that down you know if you want to pray for him pray for him once and let him go you know because it sure seems that's what God has done at least with a lot of them I mean I don't want to speak for God but I'm just saying I want you this channel is for awareness, man, and it's for awareness so that individuals don't waste any more of their time with evildoers. Don't waste any more of, you know, their love, man, on people like this because they are strong manipulators and all they want to do is crush. And, I mean, I even hate talking about it like this because, you know, I wish, you know, a lot of times that there was a way out for the narcissist, but to be real with you, I don't think there is. And a lot of times, anytime we would get involved with them, we would fall trapped to being a people pleaser. So if you think that you're going to help them, you're not. Especially if you knew them or you had a partnership with them, you're not. You're gonna be the weakest of the bunch with that individual, so you gotta let it go. And part of, part of where you get stuck is this is part of this coming out of the spell too, in my opinion is they will, you know, you keep going in circles with them. You keep staying attached to them. You keep hoping for them. You keep checking on them, maybe. I don't know. And I understand that how hard it is because I have been there several times. So there's nobody that can tell me different. But at some point in time, you got to soldier up and you got to stand tall and you got to know your enemy period because if you let that enemy back in your camp that enemy will destroy you from the inside out and and 
that's it. That's all I got for today. Um, I, I want to see y'all grow in your strength and not be like a fish out of water, man, with these fools. Because they are fools. They choose to be foolish. And we are... Paul talked about predestination in the word, okay? And I know a lot of people don't want to talk about it or they believe that, you know, it'll make somebody that's the same Christian weak or something. But the fact of the matter is it's pure scripture. And you were innately who you were. And you, the fact of the matter is you were going to either choose God or choose evil. And you were going to go to heaven or go to hell. And God being outside of time, he knows this. And he even spoke on it. He spoke on it with Jeremiah. And he spoke on it with Esau and people like that. And Paul talked about, we are, if God is who he says he is, then we are predestined. And the fact of the matter is, is there's a lot of people that go to a torturous hell when they die. But not everybody has to go there. And not everybody has to walk under a curse. And just knowing the narcissist and dealing with them on any level outside the grace to, you know, move on from whatever you had with them and just deal with them on a business level because you're attached to them with children and or, you know, finding your way out of it and financially and a way to live outside of them. You're going to get destroyed. And so that's where I believe the narcissist becomes to a state where then they get pushed into a complete traumatic state, a trauma state, like I said in the last podcast, because they're the ones that completely gave up on love. So now they're stuck in a trauma state to where whoever it is that's possessed that still has their innate self and still finds will at some point in time to, to reverse this through deliverance. They did not get to a point where they completely gave up on God, love, and will. To where they completely lost their innate self and became a shell. And part of the traumatic state is because if they're in a traumatic state, they can destroy more. Because they're running around. And they're running around to get more and more people to destroy through sex, relationships, and covenants. And so I'm going to leave it there today, and I hope this helps somebody out there today. Till next time, soldier, peace be out.